Hello and welcome to this video where we will describe the problem called max counters. In this problem we are given two inputs, n the size of our counters and a set of instructions to perform on those counters. We will walk through an example and in this example we are assuming that n equals 5, all right, that we have 5 counters. Initially these counters are initialized to 0. The instructions that we receive can be of two different types. It can be an increase of a particular counter or a max counter. The best way to explain this problem is by walking through a concrete example. So let's assume we receive n equals 5, 5 counters, and walk through a simple list of instructions for this particular problem. Our first instruction that we receive is an increase where x equals 3. This means that we need to find our third counter and increment it by 1. So in this case we go to our third counter and we increment that by 1, resulting in a value of 1. Next, again continuing with our example, we receive an increase counter 4. So we go to our fourth counter and increment this again by 1, leaving a value of also 1. Again, we receive the same increase, increase counter 4, so this time the counter is increased to 2. The next instruction is a max counter instruction. What we do in this instruction is that we reset all the counter values to be the value of our maximum counter. In this case, our maximum counter is 2, represented by counter 4. So we go through every counter and reset this to the value of 2. Our next instruction is increase of counter 1. So we go to counter 1 and we increase this to 3. Our next instruction is again an increase counter 4. So we go to the fourth counter and increase this to the value of 3. Again we receive the same increase of counter 4. So now our fourth counter has a value of 4. Once we consume all our instructions, all that's left is to return the result. And the result of this problem is the list of counters that we have just executed. As we have explained before, the problem has two inputs. One is the number of counters that we want, in this example it was 5, and the other one is a set of instructions. This set of instructions is represented in a second parameter where we receive an array. Each element in the array is a number representing our counter index. So, for example, our second element in the array, number 4, is telling us that we need to increment the fourth counter. In the same way, our fifth position in the array is saying increase counter number 1, increase the first counter. The middle entry in our array, number 6, is telling us that we should perform a max counter instruction. This is when the number in the array is bigger than the number of counters. Okay, in this case we have 6, 6 is bigger than our number of counters, 5, so we can understand that this is a max counter. Let's now have a look at our function or method signature. Our function name should be called solution and should take in two parameters. A, the second parameter, is simply our set or array of instructions. These instructions must be performed in the order they are in the array. So the first entry in the array is the first to be executed and so on. The first parameter n is simply the size of our counters. In the previous example we have seen a problem where n was 5. We had 5 counters. Once we perform our algorithm all we need to do is simply return the array with the counter results. In our previous example we would have returned an array containing 3, 2, 2 and 4 and 2 and that would have given us a correct solution. Now Codility only mentions that we should implement an efficient solution. However, the solution for this problem can be computed in order n plus m runtime. And spacetime we can compute this in order n, n being the size of the array for holding the counters. So as usual, spend a few minutes thinking about it and maybe try some implementations. And then come back and see the next video for
for a hint.